Now, here's one we prepared earlier. So, we're going to start with a blank sketch. Now, what we want to do is we want to blink our LED. So there's a few things we're going to need. So we're going to need, first of all, some way to define the pin that we're using as the output for the microcontroller, mm -hmm. which will be a variable. And we're, and we're also going to need... be able to change that yes. later on. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're going to need to, to specify that anyway. Otherwise, uh, the program doesn't know which pin we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to need some way of specifying how quickly we're blinking. Right. Yeah. So we have two variables. We have... Uh, and the way we're going to set these up is we're going to go int which means integer, int, space, and then we're going to use our variable name. So we're going to say um, LED will be our first pin, and that will be the pin that we are putting on. And we've chosen pin 0 from the data sheet. We chose PB0, so that will just be equal to 0, and then we put at the end of it a semicolon, and what that does is it tells us at the end of the line there is no more to read. And then the next line down, we're going to do another again, again int, and this will be delay, uh, I can't use the word delay because delay is a function. Right. You know, this is the uh, the delay variable. So we could call this one uh, like delay time. We could call this one time, something like that. It's best to choose variables that make sense and explain what we're talking about. So I could call this anything. I could call this A, S, D, F, G, 1, 2, A. That could be our variable name. But no one's going to understand what you're trying to talk about. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, if you just go through and call your variables var 1 and then var 2, you're not going to know what Also going to be really confusing. Yeah. So use descriptive variable names. You can okay. variable names can be as long as you want. Just it's just you have to type them out. Yeah. So for this we're going to call this one uh, delay. See how it's gone orange? That because delay is picked up as a function. Right. So we can't just use delay. We can't just use delay. So we're going to call this special. delay time. And our delay time, we're going to set that to be 500 milliseconds. That is half a second. Okay. Yeah. So it should blink on and off. Once a second. Once a second. Yep. And now we go into our void setup. So this what it says here is put your setup code here to run once. So this runs at the start of the program. So we'll go below this line and we'll press tab once to tab in. And that puts us in the same line of code. This is where we define what the pin is doing that we've selected. Right. So because we want to output a voltage to the LED, the pin is an output. Okay. So we need to use a function called pin mode, yep. which is pin. M-O-D-E, pin mode. You can see it's picked it up as a function because it's gone orange. This is what defines the mode that our pin is running in. And there's a couple of modes we can run. The most important, well, the two that we're going to be focusing on is pin mode input and pin mode output. Right. So for this, we have pin mode. We press an open bracket and we say LED, which defines our pin. Mm -hmm. And then we go press caps lock and we type output. E-U-T, P-U-T. And that's gone blue because that's picked up output in the software knows that output means that we want to set this pin as an output. Right. And it saves us typing out a lot more complicated code. And we remember, always add a semicolon to the end of the line once we're done. Right. So that's our setup code done. Easy. Yep, easy. So now we go into our loop. Now this is where we get to write some more fun stuff. This is where we get to decide what we want our function to do, what we want our software to do. So where it says void loop, put your main code here to run repeatedly means that this software will just keep looping over and over and over. Once it gets to the end, it will go back to the start and start again. Right. So there's a lot of things we can do with that. We can make things like count up, and then when it goes back, it goes back to zero, or we can make it, say, just loop through repeatedly. We can make it do other things halfway right. through. We can even write additional void functions that get called inside this function, and we can do external stuff. Um, it all depends on how much you want to research, how much you want to try it on your own. Right. It's that, that's just like a diving into programming. Right? Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Anything you can do with programming, you can do on this. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. This is what's called embedded software because it's, the software is embedded on a chip in the hardware. So for our in case, we are just going to blink an LED. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do what's called a digital write function. Mm -hmm. And that writes what's called a, a digital number, which is a, a digital is like an on or off. It's mm -hmm. like a light switch. So it's a one or a zero. Right. And we want to do a digital write to our output pin, and if we digital write a 1, that turns it on. And if we digital write a 0, that turns it off. Right. So we're turning our pin on and off. Yep. Yep. Right. So all we need to do is we need to write to that pin a 1 or a 0, and that will turn the pin on or off. And when the pin is turned on, it's 5 volts. When the pin is turned off, it's 0 volts. All right. Roughly. So we want to go digital write. See how that's gone orange now? It's picked that up as a function. 
digital right LED, and then we want to turn that on, so we'll type in high. So high in this case is one, it's on, it's five volts, the high voltage. Mm -hmm. And we put a colon at the end of that. Okay. And now we want it to be turned on. We want to be able to see it. We don't want to just turn off immediately. So this is where we want to put in a delay. Right. So that it stays on for a period of time. Okay. And funnily enough, the function for delay is just called delay. As we saw earlier when we tried to type in delay you can't time. can't just use delay. Yeah, yep. okay. So now we want to go delay, delay time. And what that does is this calls the delay function and gives it the value delay time. And it goes and looks up, up the top there, looks up how big delay time is and plugs that into the function. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So delay time, so delay the function is expecting a number uh, which it interprets as milliseconds. Okay. Yeah. So, so if we put 500, 500, that means half a second. So it'll be turned on half a second. Now if we were to just have this run like this, it would just be on forever. The code would be running fine, but we're not telling it to turn off ever. Right. So, so now, now we're we going. Let me guess. We're going to we're going to digital right LED low. Exactly. We're going to turn it off. So we do exactly the same thing again. We go digital right LED, and this time we want to type in low. And what that does is that turns off the pin. And then because we don't want it to be turned off for a split second, just an instant. Mm -hmm. We added another another delay, which is exactly the same again. Delay, delay, time. And putting that delay time in a variable means that we're not writing, having to write the same number in exactly. twice. So it's just going to go we up could put the top. A, we could put a number in here, but if we were to put a number in here, if you wanted to say, say you had a software program here that was turning on and off with, say, 10 different timing spaces between them. Mm. Now all of a sudden you've got 20 different times you have yep. to type in. And if you say, hmm, I'd like this time to be... Just a little say, bit faster. Five milliseconds yeah. different. You You're have to go, go through and change, and change every single, single one. one. Yeah. Which is why you should always use your variable, write your variables at the top of the program. This is what's called stating, uh, setting these as a global variable. Best practice here is actually, rather than just using int, is actually to put in a constant. So const int. And in front of this one, const, const int. What that does is it tells the program when it's compiling that because these are constants, they don't change. Right. And the compiler will not let you change them at all. There will be no way for the software to change that number. Right. That means that if halfway down, if you would decide to say, let's say at the end here, we would decided to change delay time, we couldn't do delay time um, and we can add, say, 200 milliseconds to that. We can't do that. Right. Because the delay time is a constant that does not change. Okay. But if we delete that constant, we could. We could, yes. So we, we could make it take <coughs> we could make it flash slower and slower and slower every time the program ran. Yeah, okay. Or faster and faster and faster and faster. Yeah, until it yeah. just didn't turn off or it didn't turn on again. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I'm gonna leave that as uh, figuring out how to do that as an exercise for you. It's like figuring can you make out it how get to faster do that, and faster yes. and faster and faster. If anyone would like a hint, for loop. Look up what a for loop is. That is how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what we can do here is we can save it so we're just going to go file and save as and now we're going to call this one let's call this uh, blinky and then we'll hit save so now we've got our sketch called blinky and that's connected to our chip our chip is plugged in so we're going to go to tools and the next thing we want to do is we want to select our board so we go to our hover over this and we're going to go to the at tiny microcontroller and we're going to select the at tiny 25 45 85 because we're using at tiny 85 then we'll click on tools again and we want to make sure our processor says at tiny 85 it might be selected one of the different ones we'll just make sure it says at tiny 85 and then we'll click on tools again and we'll set our internal clock to 8 megahertz which is the clock speed that the chip is running at that's yep. from the data sheet right then the last thing to do is to click on tools and to select our programmer and make sure this says USB Tiny ISP. It may say AVR ISP. If it says AVR, just click on USB Tiny. And what that does is it means that our software knows that it's trying to program using our little red programmer board. Once that's all set up, it and should there's look a, there is a full tutorial for getting this set up on a computer that I've linked in the description. Yep. And 
just work your way through that. That's exactly what we did. We're not going to do the same thing on camera because that would be really boring as just us following a tutorial on camera. So if we can do it, you can do it. Probably you've already been set up by your teachers before yep. you get started. Yeah. Um, what we're going to do now is we'll just double check again. So board at tiny85, processor at tiny85, clock internal 8 megahertz, programmer USB tiny ISP. So cool. awesome. Awesome. Set. So once we've got it set up, we can hit the upload button here, which is the one just the left of the tick. And we should see a little green bar. Oh, we made a mistake. <laughs> we did backwards. Oh. Did we? <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. Oh, that's real warm. Oh, it is. Okay. This may or may not work anymore. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We've been running stuff through it backwards, like, the whole time. No, no, it's just been trying to put power into ground and shorting. Surprised your USB controller didn't decide to turn off. Oh, it goes. Yeah, it still goes. It's a little tank of a chip. So when you plug it in, the uh, LED, the little orange one, will flash a bunch. That is to indicate that it's writing software to the chip. So... <laughs> I can't believe we put it in backwards after all that talking about very be very careful which way yeah. you put it in. We put it in backwards. Everyone makes Everyone mistakes. Everyone does it. Okay, so we can unplug it from the USB port. That's the software done. The chip is now programmed. So we can yoink that guy? Yoink it out. All Te done. Technical term there. Yep. So again, we're taking the chip off. Remember to just grab by both the ends and then pull straight up. So now, again, Making we sure that's the, the right, way, right way around. <laughs> Which is very important very we figured important. out. So the next thing we want to do is, again, just line it up with the, uh, the pins that we had. Let's make sure it's the right way around, it's the right way up. As we can see, I've offset that by one. It's not lined up. Right. So we just move it back so it is lined up. Cool. Press down on the top. Boop, slots in. All right. Done. So now... Moment of truth. this dude out of the way. Let's see <laughs> if our program... And let's see if our software and let's see if our programming and hardware skills were correct. Uh, all right. Plug the battery in and... Off. And... The on again. Oh! Go. That's so exciting. It's such a silly little thing, but it's so exciting. That is the foundation <laughs> of every piece of embedded hardware. Blinking oh, wow. It, blinking an LED is the most basic thing you can do. And whenever anyone gets a new embedded chip, the first thing they try and do is blink an LED. It's the hello world of hardware. <laughs> uh, I feel like I shouldn't be that excited about this, but I really <laughs> am. Just like, oh, that's so cool. It's pretty slow. We can make it go faster. <laughs> it's I'll beautiful. Le I'll leave that as an exercise. Exercise for the, for the viewer. Yeah, yeah. Is, is make, it go, make it go faster. Make it go faster. Yeah. It's a red LED. It should go faster. The red ones should go faster. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So, uh, with that, we take another step closer towards payload. Excellent. What's next? What is next? Next little, will be... Little, little teaser for next week. <laughs> little teaser for next week. Next will be addressing multiple LEDs. And we're going to go from one LED to 10 LEDs Whoa. as a way to display more information. I'm excited. So am I. Can, Can you, you imagine, I, like, if I get this excited about blinking one LED on and off, imagine how excited I'm going to get with 10. 